Hi, I'm John Page. Welcome to Paginations, where I break down aspects of the MongoDB data platform into bite-sized chunks, sharing tips, tricks, and opinions I've encountered over my last eight years at MongoDB. To start off, I'd like to talk about time series data and the dramatic improvements that MongoDB 5.0 brings for almost no extra developer effort in how we handle time series data. Specifically, how just knowing that the data is time series allows MongoDB to greatly optimize the storage and retrieval behind the scenes. But let me start by defining time series data. Typical time series data is where you have data points that have a time, a source, and a value. For example, the time, a stock symbol, and a price for that stock at that time. Or a time, a device like a car, and one or more values like speed, fuel, and location. We want to store these but when we retrieve them, we, ought, we want to retrieve them in groups. We typically want to retrieve all of the information over a span of time for a given device or set of devices or for a given series and set of series, as we use the term. Um, the other thing about these is that they're inherently fairly small. So normally the time is 64 bits. The identifier for the, the series, whether it's the identifier for a vehicle or it's the identifier for a stock symbol, is probably only going to be at most a few dozen bytes, although MongoDB does allow them to be much larger. Um, and then the data points, often just one floating point value, another 64 bits. So at most, we're probably looking for each record to be you know, 50 to 100 bytes and sometimes far smaller than that. And this is where dealing with them gets interesting. Ultimately, most databases store their information on disk, and disks store information in blocks of 4, 8, 32 kilobytes. And because disks store information in blocks, all of the layers above disks, disks, disk caches, operating systems, file systems, and yes, database software, are designed to work with blocks of data, larger than this record size that we're thinking of. Um, this is interesting. Let me show you what happens then when we store information in a database that's not optimized for time series data, whether it's traditional MongoDB or it's some other form of database. Here, as each record comes in, it's stored sequentially in a block on disk. And in order to allow us to find them, we need a couple of indexes, one for each individual data point, which allows us to find it, delete it, and um, if necessary, use it for replicate, use replication. Um, and then one which contains the series and the time, which allows us to find a range of time for a particular series, for example, the stock ticker and time. So these make relatively large indexes, one for each of the small data points. And also you'll see that the data on the disk is not particularly organized. Now, what the problem with this is when I come to read this information back, I have to read the data block by block because that's how the underlying hardware works. Now, when I do that, each block I read and process and pull the information from, I have to essentially read and then discard information I'm not interested in. So it means that reading is a much more intensive process than it needs to be. However, with MongoDB 5, we can create that collection with just a couple of extra parameters like this. And then we run the same code, reading and writing from the database, but behind the scenes and invisibly to the end user or to the developer, something very different is happening. Let me show you. So in this case, once we've told MongoDB that this is a time series collection, which field contains the time and which field we'd use to identify a series, MongoDB actually organizes the data so that data for the same source is stored in the same block. Um, for a given range of time, once a block is full, um, then we can automatically take a new block. So we're organizing the data on write in a way that allows us to optimize when we read it back later. Not only does it allow us to optimize when we read it back, but it actually allows us to optimize the storage. Because we're storing related information together, it means that we no longer need to store uh, the identifier multiple times. We can store it once within a block, so that reduces storage. When we store the data points, data points for any given thing over a time period are likely to be similar to each other, as in something will change slowly over time versus the random changes you might find where data is all intermingled. Where we have this kind of pattern in the data, that allows us to provide some degree of compression as well. 
So what does all this mean? Well, in a nutshell, it means that simply by specifying a collection as a time series collection and providing information on which field contains the time and which field contains the identifier, MongoDB can actually get currently three to five times compression on that data relative to a, a simple collection, a number which is due in, in the near future to increase dramatically as we add a few more interesting optimizations behind the scenes. Um, when we come to read the data, consequently, we also find it three to five times faster. Uh, this is an aspect not just of the compression, but also of the fact that we're no longer having to read information that we're not using as part of our query, because we can read information just for a single series or set of series. So if you store data in MongoDB in time order, or indeed in any other database, I strongly recommend giving MongoDB's time series collections a go. Just create a time series collection, use the same code you had before, and see how much of a performance benefit you can get. I'm John Page, and this has been an episode of Paginations. Thank you for listening.